I stood in the dimly lit hallway of our home, staring at the suitcases and briefcase. They'd looked foreign, almost like they belonged to someone else. Yet they were mine, packed with clothes and memories of a life I thought was solid. My heart pounded in my chest as I heard the soft click of the bedroom door opening behind me. Liam, please don't do this. Abba's voice was thick with desperation. She stood in the doorway, her eyes wide and pleading. It was just a stupid mistake at the party. I didn't mean for any of this to happen. I turned to face her, my jaw clenched. Ava, it's not just about the party. It's everything. It's the way you look at him. The way you let him touch you. It's been eating at me for too long. She stepped closer, her hands trembling. Liam, I love you. You're my husband, the father of our children. Don't let one night destroy everything we built. I shook my head, the weight of my decision pressing down on me. It's not just one night, Ava. It's what it represents. It's the culmination of all the doubts and insecurities I've felt over the years. You and Noah have a history that I can't compete with. Ava's eyes filled with tears, and she reached out to touch my arm. Please, Lam. I'm begging you. We can work through this. We can go to counseling. Do whatever it takes to fix this. I pulled away, the pain in my chest making it hard to breathe. I don't think there's anything left to fix, Ava. I've been trying to convince myself that we could get past this. But deep down, I know we can't. The silence between us was heavy, filled with the unspoken words and regrets of a marriage that had been crumbling for years. Ava sank to the floor, her sobs echoing through the hallway. I wanted to comfort her to tell her that everything would be okay, but I knew it would be a lie. I have to go, I said, my voice barely above a whisper. I can't stay here and pretend that everything's fine when it's not. Ava looked up at me, her face streaked with tears. What about the kids, Lamb? What about Emma and Jack? How do we explain this to them? I swallowed hard, the thought of our children breaking my heart all over again. We'll tell them the truth, Ava. That sometimes, even when two people love each other, they can't make it work. But I promise you, I'll always be there for them. I'll always be their father. She nodded slowly, her sobs quieting down. I don't want to lose you, Liam. You already have, I replied softly, turning away from her. I picked up my suitcases and walked out the door, leaving behind the life I had known for so long. As I drove away, the tears I had been holding back finally fell, blurring my vision. I knew that this was just the beginning of the unraveling, and that the road ahead would be filled with pain and uncertainty. But for the first time in a long time, I felt a glimmer of hope that maybe, just maybe, I could find a way to heal. Driving away from the home Iva and I had built together, I couldn't help but reflect on the years we spent side by side. Our marriage wasn't all bad, in fact there were moments of genuine happiness. We had two beautiful children, Emma and Jack, who were the lights of my life. I thought about how we used to take them to the park every Saturday, how their laughter would fill the air as they played. As I navigated the familiar streets, my mind wandered back to the early days of our relationship. Ava and I met in college. She was vibrant and full of life, with a smile that could light up any room. We fell in love quickly, the kind of love that felt invincible. We got married just after graduation, and soon after, Emma came into our lives, followed by Jack two years later. We moved to the suburbs, settling into what seemed like the perfect life. I got a job as an accountant, and Ava worked as a graphic designer from home. Our life was busy but fulfilling. We attended neighborhood barbecues, went on family vacations, and hosted holiday gatherings. Our home was filled with the warmth of family and the promise of a future together. But somewhere along the way, things started to change. Ava grew distant, and I buried myself in work to avoid confronting the growing chasm between us. We stopped having meaningful conversations, and our nights were often spent in silence, side by side, but worlds apart. I sensed her restlessness, but every time I tried to bring it up, she would brush it off, claiming she was just tired or stressed. The party where everything fell apart was just the tipping point. It was a neighborhood gathering, the kind we used to love. Alva looked stunning in a red dress, her hair falling in loose waves around her shoulders. I watched her from across the room, feeling a pang of nostalgia for the days when we couldn't keep our hands off each other. Then I saw him, Noah, tall, confident, and annoyingly handsome. They had dated briefly before Iba and I got together, but I had always felt a lingering tension whenever he was around. That night, I saw them dancing closely, his hands resting too comfortably on her hips. The jealousy and anger that had been simmering inside me erupted. 
and I left the party in a fit of rage. Now as I drove through the quiet streets, I felt a mixture of sadness and relief. The weight of our failing marriage had been lifted, but the uncertainty of what lay ahead was daunting. I pulled into the driveway of a small motel on the outskirts of town, the neon sign flickering ominously. This would be my home for now, a temporary refuge as I figured out my next steps. I checked in and dragged my suitcases up the narrow staircase to a modest room with faded wallpaper and a lumpy bed. I sat down heavily, the events of the evening crashing over me in waves. I thought about Emma and Jack, about how I would explain to them why Daddy wasn't coming home. The thought of their innocent faces twisted in confusion and hurt was almost more than I could bear. I reached for my phone and saw a missed call from Ava. She had left a voicemail, her voice trembling with emotion. Liam, please come back. We can work this out. For the kids. For us. I love you. I pressed to leap without listening to the rest. I knew what needed to be done, and going back now would only prolong the inevitable. The love we once had had been tainted by lies and betrayal, and no amount of pleading could change that. As I lay down on the uncomfortable bed, I felt a tear slip down my cheek. The road ahead was uncertain, but for the first time in a long time, I was facing it head on. The unraveling of our life together had begun, and there was no turning back. The party was supposed to be a celebration, a night to let loose and have fun with friends and neighbors. Ava had spent the day getting ready, her excitement palpable. She twirled in front of the mirror, asking for my opinion on her dress. The red one hugged her curves perfectly, making her look both elegant and irresistible. You look beautiful, I told her, forcing a smile. I wanted to believe that this night would be different, that we could find a spark again. When we arrived at the party, the atmosphere was lively. Music played. Laughter filled the air and the aroma of grilled food wafted through the backyard. We mingled with friends, shared stories, and for a while, it felt like old times. Alva and I even danced together, her body pressed close to mine. But the warmth between us felt force, like an act we both struggled to maintain. As the night wore on, I found myself standing alone by the drink table, watching Abba from a distance. She was talking to Noah, her ex-boyfriend. I could see the way her eyes sparkled as they laughed together the easy familiarity between them that I could never quite match. Jealousy gnawed at me, but I tried to ignore it. I took a long sip of my drink, hoping the alcohol would dull the edge of my growing anxiety. Then they started dancing. At first, it seemed innocent enough, just two friends enjoying the music. But as the song went on, their movements became slower, more intimate. Noah's hands rested on her hips and she leaned into him, her head resting on his shoulder. My heart pounded in my chest and I felt a surge of anger and betrayal. I couldn't take it anymore. I stormed across the yard. My fists clenched at my sides. Noah, I said loudly, my voice trembling with rage. Do you mind if I cut in? Ava looked at me, her eyes wide with surprise. Liam, it's just a dance, she said, her voice calm but defensive. Just a dance? I repeated, my voice rising. Is that what you call this? I gestured to the way Noah was holding her, his hand straying too close to places only I should touch. Noah stepped back, raising his hands in mock surrender. Hey, man, we're just having fun. No need to get worked up. Fun? I spat, feeling the heat of everyone's eyes on us. This isn't fun for me, Noah. This is my wife. Ava grabbed my arm, her grip firm. Liam, stop. You're making a scene. I yanked my arm away, my vision blurring with unch tears. Maybe I should, Abba. Maybe it's time everyone knows what's really going on. The party had gone silent, all eyes fixed on our confrontation. I saw pity in some faces, curiosity in others. I took a deep breath, trying to steady myself. Ava, let's go home. We need to talk. She hesitated, glancing at Noah before nodding. Fine, she said softly. Let's go. We left the party in silence, the tension between us thicker than ever. As we drove home, I replayed the scene in my mind, each moment fueling my anger and hurt. I knew that confronting her was only the beginning, that the real battle was just beginning. When we arrived home, I parked the car and turned to her. Ava, I can't do this anymore. I can't keep pretending that everything's okay when it's not. She looked at me, her eyes filled with tears. Liam, please. We can fix this. We can go to counseling. Talk to someone. I don't want to lose you. I shook my head, feeling the weight of my decision settle over me. It's too late, Abba. This isn't just about tonight. It's about everything. The lies, the betrayal. 
I can't live like this. She reached out to touch my face, but I pull away. Liam, I love you. I love you too, I said, my voice breaking. But sometimes love isn't enough. I got out of the car and walked into the house, leaving her sitting there, tears streaming down her face. As I started packing my bags, I knew that the life we had built together was over. The party had been the final straw the moment that shattered the illusion we had been clinging to. I took one last look around the house, memories flooding my mind. Then I walked out the door, leaving behind the life I had known, and stepping into the unknown. The unraveling had begun, and there was no turning back. The motel room was dark and suffocating, but it was better than the silence of our home. As I sat on the edge of the bed, my thoughts spiraled into a tangled mess. How had things gone so wrong? Ava's betrayal played over and over in my mind, each detail cutting deeper than the last. Unable to sleep, I grabbed my phone and scrolled through the missed calls and messages from Baba. Each one a plea for me to come back, to talk things out. But I couldn't face her, not yet. I needed to clear my head, to make sense of the chaos inside me. Just as I was about to put the phone down, a new message appeared. It was from Noah. My heart pounded as I opened it. We need to talk. Meet me at the park. Anger surged through me. The audacity of him to contact me after everything. But part of me needed answers, needed to confront the man who had been a shadow over my marriage for so long. I grabbed my keys and headed out, the cool night air a stark contrast to the heat of my rage. The park was deserted, the only sound the rustling of leaves in the breeze. I spotted Noah sitting on a bench under a street lamp, his silhouette cast long and menacing on the pavement. I approached, my fists clenched, ready for whatever confrontation awaited. Liam, he greeted me, his tone calm, almost casual. No, I replied coldly, standing a few feet away. What do you want? He sighed, running a hand through his hair. I want to clear the air. This thing between us. It needs to end. Thing between us. I snapped. You mean the fact that you've been trying to get close to my wife since the day we met? Noah stood up, facing me. Look, I know you're angry, and you have every right to be. But it's not what you think. Ava and I, we have history. Yes, we were close, but I never intended to come between you two. I laughed bitterly. You expect me to believe that? I saw the way you looked at her, the way you touched her. I won't lie, Noah said, his voice softening. I still care about her, but she's your wife, Lamb. I've respected that, no matter how hard it was. Respected? I shouted, stepping closer. You call what happened at the party respect. You crossed a line, Noah, and now my marriage is falling apart because of it. He shook his head. Your marriage was already falling apart, Liam. You just didn't want to see it. The truth of his words hit me like a punch to the gut. Deep down, I knew he was right. Ava and I had been drifting apart for years, and Noah was just the catalyst that brought everything to the surface. What do you want from me, Noah? I asked, my voice breaking. What do you expect me to do? I want you to fight for her, he said simply. If you still love her, if you believe there's a chance to save your marriage, then fight for her. Don't let your pride destroy everything. I stared at him, my anger slowly melting into a mixture of confusion and despair. And what about you? What do you get out of this? No shrugged. I just want her to be happy. If that's with you, then so be it. His words hum in the air, a challenge and a plea all at once. I turned away, struggling to contain the whirlwind of emotions inside me. Could I really save my marriage? Did I even want to? I need time to think, I said finally, my voice hollow. Noah nodded. Take all the time you need, but don't wait too long, Liam. Life has a way of moving on whether we're ready or not. I walked away, my mind a maze of conflicting thoughts. As I drove back to the motel, I replayed Noah's words over and over. Maybe he was right. Maybe there was still a chance to salvage something from the wreckage of our marriage. But first, I needed to face Abba to confront the lies and the hurt, and decide if our love was worth fighting for. The thought of it filled me with dread, but I knew there was no other way forward. The unraveling had brought me to this point, and now it was time to see where it would lead. When I returned to the hotel, I was exhausted. The confrontation with Noah had drained me, leaving me with more questions than answers. I knew I couldn't avoid Abba forever. The next morning, I called her and asked her to meet me in a quiet cafe on the edge of town. It was neutral ground, a place where we could talk without the weight of our shared history pressing down on us. Ava arrived a few minutes after I did, looking worn and frail. 
Her usual confident demeanor was replaced by uncertainty, and it broke my heart to see her like that. She sat down across from me, her eyes searching mine for any sign of hope. Liam, she began, her voice trembling. Thank you for agreeing to meet. I know I've hurt you, and I'm so sorry. Please let's talk about this. I nodded, trying to keep my emotions in check. Alva, I need to understand. What happened? Why did you let things get this far with no... She took a deep breath, tears welling up in her eyes. I don't know how to explain it. No, and I have a history, yes, but I never meant for it to interfere with our marriage. I got caught up in the moment, and I made a terrible mistake. But Lamb, I swear, I never intended to betray you. Her words were sincere, but they did little to ease the pain. It's not just about the party, Abba. It's about the years of feeling like I was losing you. The distance, the silence. I felt like I was living with a stranger. She reached across the table, taking my hand in hers. Liam, I know I've been distant. I've been struggling with my own insecurities, my own fears. But that doesn't excuse what I did. I should have talked to you, been honest about how I was feeling. I should have fought for us. I pulled my hand away, the touch too painful. Do you love him, Baba? Are you in love with Noah? She shook her head vehemently. No, Lamb. I don't love him. I love you. I've always loved you. Noah was a mistake. A distraction from the real issues between us. But you're the one I want to be with. The sincerity in her voice tugged at my heart. But the betrayal was still fresh, still raw. Ava, I want to believe you. But how do I know this won't happen again? How do I trust you after this? She wiped away a tear, her gaze steady. I know I've broken your trust, and it's going to take time to rebuild it. But I'm willing to do whatever it takes. Counseling, therapy, whatever you need. I want to fix this, Liam. I want to fix us. The desperation in her voice was clear, and it mirrored my own conflicted feelings. Part of me wanted to forgive her, to start fresh and rebuild what we had lost. But another part of me was terrified of being hurt again. I need time, Ava, I said finally. I need time to process all of this to figure out what I want. She nodded, her eyes filled with hope. Take all the time you need, Liam. I'll be here, waiting for you. Just know that I love you, and I'm willing to fight for us. We sat in silence for a while, the weight of our conversation hanging heavy between us. Finally, I stood up, feeling the need to escape, to breathe. I'll call you, I said softly, and walked out of the cafe. As I drove back to the motel, my mind was a whirlwind of emotions. Ava's plea had stirred something in me, a flicker of hope that maybe, just maybe, we could find a way through this. But the road ahead was uncertain, and I knew it would take everything we had to heal the wounds of our broken marriage. Back in the motel room, I collapsed onto the bed, exhaustion taking over. The unraveling of our life together was far from over, but for the first time, I felt a glimmer of hope that we could find a way to piece it back together. The journey ahead would be long and painful, but if Ava was willing to fight for us, then maybe I could find the strength to fight too. Days turned into a blur of restless nights and introspective days. I stayed in the motel, the four walls closing in on me as I wrestled with my thoughts. Ava's words replayed in my mind, her tears, her desperation. It was clear she wanted to make things right, but could we really repair the damage? One evening, after a particularly long day at work, I found myself sitting in my car outside the motel, staring at my phone. There were several missed calls from Iva and a few messages from my friends, all concerned about my sudden disappearance. I felt the weight of their concern, but I couldn't bring myself to talk to anyone yet. I dialed a number I hadn't called in years. My sister Emily. She picked up on the second ring. Lamb, is everything okay? Her voice was filled with worry. Hey Em, I said, my voice cracking. I need to talk. Can you meet me somewhere? Of course. Where are you? We decided to meet at a quiet diner on the outskirts of town. Emily arrived before I did, sitting in a corner booth with a cup of coffee. She looked up as I entered, her expression softening with concern. Liam, she said, standing to hug me. What's going on? We sat down, and I poured out everything. The party Ava's betrayal, my confrontation with Noah, and Ava's plea for forgiveness. Emily listened patiently, her expression never wavering from one of support and love. So what do you think? I asked finally, my voice barely above a whisper. Emily took a sip of her coffee, considering her words carefully. Liam, I think you need to decide what you really want. Do you still love Baba? Do you believe she's genuinely sorry and willing to make things right? I don't know, I admitted. 
I want to believe her, but the trust is broken. How do we come back from that? Emily reached across the table. Taking my hand in hers, it's not going to be easy. Rebuilding trust takes time and effort from both sides. But if you still love her, and if she's truly willing to work on it, then maybe it's worth giving it a shot. Her words resonated with me. I did still love Ava, despite everything. The thought of our children growing up in a broken home tore at my heart. Maybe, just maybe, we could find a way to heal. Thanks, Em, I said, squeezing her hand. I needed to hear that. She smiled softly. Anytime, Liam. Just remember, whatever decision you make, it has to be what's best for you and the kids. You deserve to be happy too. I drove back to the motel with a renewed sense of clarity. It was time to face Abba and make a decision. One way or another. I couldn't live in limbo forever. The next morning, I called Abba and asked her to meet me at the house. She agreed, her voice tinged with nervous anticipation. When I arrived, she was waiting on the porch, her eyes red from crying. Liam, she began, but I held up a hand to stop her. Let's go inside, I said. We sat down in the living room, the silence between us heavy with unspoken words. I took a deep breath, gathering my thoughts. Alva, I've been thinking a lot about us, I started. About what happened and where we go from here. I won't lie, I'm still hurt, and the trust is shattered. But I also know that I still love you, and I want to believe we can make this work. Her eyes filled with tears, and she nodded. I love you too, Liam. More than anything. I'll do whatever it takes to fix this to prove to you that I'm committed to our marriage. I reached out, taking her hand in mine. We need to rebuild the trust, and it's going to take time. Counseling, open communication, and a lot of effort from both of us. But if you're willing to put in the work, then so am I. Ava's face lit up with a mixture of relief and hope. Thank you, Liam. I promise I won't let you down. We spent the rest of the day talking, laying the groundwork for the difficult journey ahead. It wasn't going to be easy, but for the first time in a long time, I felt a sense of hope. We had a long road ahead of us, filled with challenges and uncertainties, but we were facing it together. As I looked into Ida's eyes, I saw a reflection of my own determination. We were both ready to fight for our marriage, to reclaim the love that had been lost. It was the beginning of a new chapter, one that we would write together, day by day. The first counseling session was daunting. Alva and I sat in the waiting room, the silence between us palpable. We had agreed to seek professional help to navigate through the pain and betrayal, but the reality of confronting our issues head-on was terrifying. Mr. and Mrs. Hayes, we're ready for you, the therapist called, her voice gentle but firm. Alva and I exchanged a nervous glance and followed her into the office. The therapist, Dr. Marshall, was a calm, empathetic woman in her fifties. She gestured for us to sit on the couch opposite her chair. Thank you for coming, she began, her eyes kind. I know this is difficult, but acknowledging the need for help is the first step toward healing. Ava squeezed my hand, and I took a deep breath. We want to make this work, I said, but there's a lot of pain and broken trust that we need to address. Dr. Marshall nodded. That's understandable. Why don't we start by discussing what led you here? I looked at Ava, signaling for her to begin. She nodded, tears welling up in her eyes. I made a terrible mistake, she said, her voice trembling. I let my insecurities and fears drive me to seek comfort in someone else. I never meant to hurt Liam, and I regret it deeply. Her words were raw, and I could see the pain in her eyes. It mirrored my own. I felt like I was losing her, I admit. There was a distance growing between us, and I didn't know how to bridge it. When I saw her with Noah, it felt like the final blow. Dr. Marshall listened attentively, her gaze moving between us. It's clear that both of you are hurting, she said softly. But the fact that you're here, willing to talk and work through this, is a positive sign. Over the next few weeks, we attended counseling sessions regularly. Each session was a mixture of painful honesty and small steps toward rebuilding our relationship. We learned to communicate openly, to express our fears and insecurities without judgment. It was a slow process, but with each passing day, the bond between us began to strengthen. At home, we made a conscious effort to reconnect. We planned date nights, spent quality time with Emma and Jack, and reintroduced intimacy into our relationship. It wasn't always easy. There were moments of doubt and lingering resentment, but we were committed to making it work. One evening, after the kids were in bed, Ava and I sat on the porch, the cool night air wrapping around us. She leaned her head on my shoulder, and I wrapped my arm around her. 
Thank you for giving us another chance, she whispered. I know it hasn't been easy. I kissed the top of her head, feeling a sense of peace I hadn't felt in a long time. It's been tough, I admitted. But I believe in us. I believe we can come out of this stronger. She looked up at me, her eyes filled with love and gratitude. I promise I'll never take you for granted again. You're everything to me, Liam. Her words touched me deeply, and I knew they were sincere. We had been through hell and back, but we were still standing, still fighting for our love. As the weeks turned into months, the wounds began to heal. We celebrated small victories, a shared laugh, a meaningful conversation, a moment of unguarded affection. Each step brought us closer, and the trust that had been shattered slowly started to rebuild. One afternoon, while watching the kids play in the backyard, Abba turned to me with a smile. I was thinking, she said, maybe we should renew our vows, start fresh with a new commitment to each other. The idea filled me with hope. I'd like that, I said, taking her hand in mine. A new beginning. We planned a small ceremony with close family and friends, a celebration of our renewed commitment to each other. On the day of the vow renewal, Ava looked stunning in a simple white dress, her eyes sparkling with happiness. As we stood in front of our loved ones, exchanging vows, I felt a sense of gratitude for the journey we had undertaken. It wasn't easy, and it never would be, but we had found our way back to each other. I promise to love and cherish you, to stand by your side through the good and the bad, and to always fight for our love, I said, my voice steady with conviction. And I promise to love and honor you, to support you in all that you do, and to never let go of the love that brought us together. Ava replied, her voice filled with emotion. We seal our vows with a kiss, the past behind us, and a future full of possibilities ahead. The road to healing was long, but we had taken the first steps together, hand in hand. As I looked into Ava's eyes, I saw the woman I had fallen in love with all those years ago, and I knew, without a doubt, that we had the strength to face whatever came our way. Our love had been tested, but it had emerged stronger, a testament to the power of forgiveness and the enduring strength of the human heart. Renewing our vows was a powerful step toward healing, but it was just the beginning of our new journey. The days following the ceremony were filled with a renewed sense of purpose and commitment. Alva and I were determined to build a stronger, more honest relationship. One Saturday morning, we decided to take Emma and Jack to the beach. It had been a while since we'd spent a whole day together as a family, and the kids were excited. As we drove along the coast, the sun rising over the horizon, I felt a sense of peace that had eluded me for so long. At the beach, we set up a spot near the water. The kids ran off to build sandcastles, their laughter carried by the breeze. Ava and I sat on a blanket, watching them play. It feels good to be here, Ava said, her voice soft. With you. With them. I nodded, smiling as Emma chased Jack with a handful of sand. Yeah, it does. We needed this. Ava reached over, taking my hand in hers. I know we've come a long way, but there's still a lot of work to do. I turned to her, seeing the determination in her eyes. I know, and I'm ready for it. As long as we're together, we can handle anything. We spent the day playing with the kids, swimming in the ocean, and talking about our hopes for the future. As the sun began to set, painting the sky in hues of orange and pink, we gathered around a small bonfire, roasting marshmallows and sharing stories. Daddy, can you tell us a story? Jack asked, his eyes wide with excitement. I smiled, ruffling his hair. Sure, buddy. How about the story of how Mommy and I met? Emmett and Jack settled in, their eyes fixed on me as I began to recount the tale of our college days, the awkward first date, and the moment I knew Ava was the one for me. Ava chimed in, adding her own memories and making the kids giggle with stories of our early adventures. As we drove home that night, the kids asleep in the back seat. I felt a sense of contentment. Ava reached over and placed her hand on my thigh, a simple gesture that spoke volumes. I love you, Liam, she said softly. I love you too, Ava, I replied, squeezing her hand. The days turned into weeks and the weeks into months. We continued our counseling sessions, committed to working through our issues and rebuilding our trust. There were still moments of doubt and fear, but we faced them together, leaning on each other for support. One evening, as we sat on the porch watching the sunset, Ava turned to me with a smile. I've been thinking about something, she said, her eyes sparkling. What's that? I asked, curious. I want to start a new project, she said. Something we can do together. I've always loved photography, and you've got a great eye for detail. 
What if we started a small photography business, capturing moments for other families, helping them create memories like the ones we're building? I considered her idea, feeling a spark of excitement. I love it, I said. It could be something really special, and it would be another way for us to spend time together, doing something we both enjoy. Alva's smile widened. Exactly. I think it could be really good for us. And so, we began planning our new venture. We took photography classes, invested in some equipment, and started building our portfolio. It was challenging, but it was also incredibly rewarding. Working together brought us even closer, and seeing the joy on our clients' faces when they saw their photos was priceless. Our business grew slowly but steadily, and with each new client, our confidence grew. We were building something meaningful, something that was a testament to our resilience and love. One evening, after a particularly successful photo shoot, we sat on the porch, reflecting on how far we had come. We've been through so much, Ava said, her voice filled with emotion. But look at us now. We're stronger than ever. I wrapped my arm around her, pulling her close. We are. And I'm so proud of us, Ava. We built something beautiful out of the ashes. She looked up at me, her eyes shining with tears. Thank you for not giving up on us, Liam. I kissed her gently, feeling the depth of our connection. I'll never give up on us, Ava. We're a team, now and always. As we sat there, watching the stars appear in the night sky, I knew that our journey was far from over. There would be more challenges, more obstacles to overcome. But I also knew that we had the strength and the love to face anything that came our way. Our story wasn't just about betrayal and pain. It was about redemption and growth. It was a testament to the power of love and the resilience of the human spirit. And as we moved forward, hand in hand, I knew that we were ready to face whatever the future held. Together, we had written a new chapter in our lives, a chapter filled with hope, love, and endless possibilities. And that was something truly worth fighting for.